Hey guys, my name's Gaurav, and welcome to the first episode of Tactical Studies. This is going to be a series where I talk about, dissect, and maybe even hack some of the features you can find in Dungeons & Dragons, one of the best role-playing games ever made. In this episode, I want to talk about the average damage feature, which is something new to the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons, and then I also have a way to slightly modify it to give it a little bit of variance. Let's get to it! edition, they added a neat little feature to every monster stat block. Average damage. It's this little number right here. Right there. Three. This is the amount of damage that an attack does on average. So for example, a Bullywug Spear attack does five damage on average. Meaning if you actually rolled out the damage, which is a d8 plus a modifier of one, most of the time you would get around five. Using this feature, you can save a lot of time during combat by avoiding dice rolls and doing less math. I asked some of you Dungeon Masters on Twitter of what you thought about the average damage feature, and the responses I got were quite mixed. Matt Covell said, never use it. Rolling dice is fun. The Dungeon Master agreed with him and added that rolling dice is part of the drama built into the game. Mike Shea, better known as Sly Flourish, disagreed and said, I get my drama from rolling 20s. I don't care about the difference between a 24 and 28. Mendel says he prefers average damage, anything to make combat go faster. The Crit Juice DM was somewhere in the middle, saying that he always rolls, but it's helpful for running hordes of monsters. Now on one hand, I can totally understand why using average damage isn't that great. Knowing that a monster is going to hit you for the same amount each turn isn't that fun. It kind of takes all the excitement out of the game because it's a game where anything can happen. You can get hit for 1 or you can get hit for 20, depending on the dice. But if you're using average damage, that's not going to happen. And worse than that, it can even breed metagaming. Let's imagine a scenario where your character has been fighting Bullywugs for a few rounds now, your DM is using the average damage for attacks, which means for the last few rounds you've been getting hit by their spears and taking 5 damage each time, and you have about 8 hit points left. So if you get hit one more time, barring a critical hit, you're going to take 5 damage again and you'll be down to 3, which means you'll be okay. But if your DM was rolling for damage, there's a chance they could knock you out next turn. And that's what makes it exciting, you know? That's what keeps you on your toes and makes you pay attention to every roll. On the other hand, using the average damage feature means you'll be rolling less dice and doing less math, which kind of improves combat a little bit, don't you think? You'll be flowing through it instead of slowing down for dice rolls and adding up numbers. This takes a little bit of pressure off of you if you're the dungeon master, which means you can focus on what's most important, your story and your players. So now that you've heard both sides of the argument, you as a dungeon master can make your own decision. Do you want to use average damage, or do you want to roll the dice and see what happens? It's quite a conundrum, isn't it? Uh, if there only was some way to combine them into some mad system... Hmm, if only... Well, guess what? I have done it. I have created a system where you can use the average damage and add a little variance to it. I call it MAD, or Modified Average Damage. With this method that I've cooked up, you will use the average number printed on that stat block, but you'll modify it afterwards with one die roll. Now, this isn't that useful for lower levels where you're rolling one die for damage anyways, but as challenge ratings continue to rise during your adventure and you start rolling more and more dice, this thing can really help out. To give you an example of the MAD method in action, uh, let's use a different monster from the monster manual, the Cyclops. With its Great Club, the Cyclops does 3d8 plus 6 bludgeoning damage, which averages out to 19. If you're using the MAD method, you'll take the average damage of 19 and then roll one die of the damage dealt, which is a d8, and adjust the average based on whether you roll an even number or an odd number. If you roll an odd number, you'll subtract that number from the average. If you roll an even number, you'll add it instead. For example, if you roll a 6, you'll add 6 to the average, giving you a damage roll of 25. If you roll a 3, you'll subtract 3 from the average, giving you a damage roll of 16. With this method, you'll do less math, and the number will still be fairly random. Instead of rolling 3 dice and adding the modifier, you'll just roll 1 dice and add or subtract that from the average damage, which saves you a ton of time and keeps combat flowing forward. Now, as an aside, I will say that the spectacle of rolling 15 d8s when a black dragon does his uh, acid breath is kind of awesome. You're going to want to see the looks on your players' faces when you roll that many dice at the table. However, that moment might fade into tedium when you do it the second time 
and the third time, and it takes a bit to do the math and put it all together. I'd recommend doing that once so you can get the reaction from your players, but then from then on just use the mad method for the rest of the rolls. So that's it. That's the mad method, and that's the video on average damage. Now, I'm not saying that the MAD method is some be-all end-all of damage calculation. You can still use the average damage numbers printed in the monster manual, or you can roll all the dice and add it all together. It's up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. But if you want to use my alternative method, then please, by all means, do it and let me know how it goes. Uh, put a comment down below and uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'm at DoubleGXG. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.